our talk of the day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, we passed out, Dee passed out cards. She got a lot of practice doing this yesterday. Um, and we ended the, our retreat with someone who came in and uh, a Native American, and he told his story, and it was beautiful and shared wisdom and some wonderful drumming and songs. And so in honor of him, these cards come from uh, the Four Agreements. Um, yeah, so it was, it was really lovely. And happy Father's Day to everyone who has shown leadership and life lessons and all of those great things to anybody. It's kind of where I am with Father's Day. I think we all have that, that mother-father energy within us and we bring it with us wherever we go. And we influence others with it wherever we go. So happy day to all of us and especially happy day to those fathers here and everywhere else. The, we meet at um, a community center that has a golf course and lots of dads are out golfing today, but the ground is so wet they don't get to take a cart. <laughs> so there's a lot of dads carrying their own golf clubs today. Just, you know, thought that was kind of fun to know. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, life, life is life. And that's, this month we're sort of focusing on the law of attraction in terms of knowing that it's all good in our neighborhood. And it's good because we're there. And it is truly all about what Gary just shared with us. It's about having the attitude at an altitude of gratitude, right? Knowing, knowing it is going to work out okay. It's all going to be just fine. And we started off the month in terms of expanding that goodness. We talked about taking lessons from the past and bringing them into the present without the stories, right? Without the, without the attachment to it, but just the lesson itself and allowing ourselves to be fully present and listening to that voice. And last week, Reverend Joanne talked about the winds of change. And no matter how big they look or feel, right, this too shall pass. It's a blessing that's in the process of unfolding. Because the one thing that is consistent in all of our lives is change. It's like the one thing we're guaranteed is change. And if we're not changing, we're not growing, we're not expanding, we're not being a full expression of who we are without that change. Because spirit is forever desiring a greater expression of love, of peace, of joy. And the way spirit does that is through the divine spark within each and every one of us. And that divine spark is what's initiating the change. And there's a lot of power in remembering that, in remembering that it's all small stuff. We're just making it big. And it's that divine spark at our core that is always going to push us forward. And sometimes, right, it's a, it's a little nudge. Sometimes it's a little tap on the shoulder, and at some point, if we continue to resist that change, the two by four comes out, right? So, right, it's a big whack. So if we started looking at the small changes, the small stuff, and jo welcomed it joyfully, how much more prepared would we be for the big stuff? right? I, I love the idea of starting a spiritual practice or intensifying it or changing it up during a period of time in your life, in my life, when things are going really well, you know? 
Because it is at that point that I'm like, you know what, I probably don't need that second meditation today. But that's not true. When we start to take that spiritual muscle and we start to really, really develop it through gratitude when things are going so great, that when things start to go a little south, right, we're like in it to win it. We are there because we've never left there, right? We've, we've strengthened our spiritual muscle through our daily practices so that when stuff goes a little south, we're ready. That's how we keep the stuff small. We get to manage that smallness. Ernest Holmes, our founder, wrote a little pamphlet called um, Keys to Wisdom. And in it, he writes, we constantly discard old ideas and take on new and better ones. The mind gives us no rest. The instinct urges us on. The intuition draws us upward. Isn't that lovely? To know that that is our truth. That right there is our truth. He also says in the textbook, the desire arises from the necessity of the universe to become self-expressed. Self-expressed. And that's what I want to look at today. I want to look at the fact that there are three ways that we call forth a greater self-expression of life, of love, of joy. We call it forth. Each and every one of us in our own way. Because our mind never rests. And our instincts are always to expand to a greater expression of the life we desire. We're always being drawn upward in our own thoughts, especially those thoughts that we have at, after, a, after a spiritual practice, after a positive read, after, after a loving, heartfelt conversation with someone. We're just pulled upward. And since we know it's all small stuff, I want to remind us of what Reverend Joanne shared, that it's all small stuff. And spirit doesn't give us anything we can't handle. I think it was Mother Teresa who um, said something to the effect of, I wish God didn't trust me this much, right? <laughs> And it's true. Sometimes it's like, oh, my God, are you sure I can do this? Oh, my God, are you sure? But we can. And what I would like you to consider is instead of looking at change from a point of fear, to look at it from a point of this is good. This is very good. Because it means there's more of me to experience a greater expression of love. And if you can't get to that point of good and very good, at least get to that place of, I'm keeping this a molehill and not turning it into a mountain. So I have a side story. A gentleman goes into the ladies' department of Macy's and he says to the clerk, I'd like to buy a bra for my wife. And she's like, what type of bra? He's like, what do you mean? She's like, look around. Look at all these bras. And he's like, well, I don't really know. And so the salesperson can realize he's a little confused. And she says, you know, look, there's really only three types of bras. So let's start with that. He said three types. And she says, well, yeah. There's the Catholic, the Salvation Army, and the Baptist type. Which do you want? And he's like... Oh, that wasn't helpful. <laughs> She's like, okay. The Catholic type supports the masses. <laughs> the Salvation Army type uplifts the fallen. <laughs> and the Baptist type makes mountains out of molehills. <laughs> so I'm hoping that allows you to remember it's all just molehills, right? <laughs> Don't need to invest in anything. It's just all molehills. <laughs> so 
We're talking about the law of attraction. So I just want to, we all know it. I just want to like recap a couple of points about it, right? First off, God is always creating, which means that we are always creating. Form is always changing. And since everything is form, everything is always changing all of the time. And that includes our experiences. And the other thing I want to just remind everybody is that it, what, what we focus on is how we bring it about. So when we start to focus on bring on some change, it's, it's good, it'll be fine. When I look back, I won't even be stressed out about it anymore. Or we can be full of fear that things are gonna change and it's not gonna be as perfect as it is right here and right now. But when we take that attitude of there's miracles happening everywhere. In fact, all of life is a miracle. When we, go, when we look at change from that place, instead of from a place of fear, things tend to shift. And that's because our, the mental atmosphere around us has changed. Our mental atmosphere is similar to our vibration, right? We're either like down here in the in the guts of it all, you know? Or we could be up here in the love of it all. And when we're up here in the love of it all, it's just smoother. And why? Because we're attracting more of that love. Can you think about a time years ago, way before this teaching, right, when things were just, they weren't good? that there was always something to complain about. Remember, you were judgmental and angry and you couldn't understand why all of this crap keeps happening. Think about that time. And then think about the people you were hanging out with, the people that wanted to hang out with you. I can tell you, they weren't positive, happy, successful people. I had them in my life but they didn't really want to hang with me anymore because our energies weren't matching our vibration. They're like up here successful, molehill land. And I'm like down here in the, in the mountain. I'm like way down here. And so the only people who wanted to hear my story over and over were the ones that also had stories to share over and over, right? Sure. But when we get rid of those stories and we just keep the lesson, we're like, okay, here's the pearl from this disaster. I'm losing my story, I'm keeping my pearl. Then people who also have pearls wanna hang out with us. And they wanna share their pearl, not their story. Think about it. And from that place of sharing one's pearl, we're shifting from a place of judgment in anger to a place of enlightenment and a willingness to share from a perspective of love. Not from a perspective of, oh me, oh my, not again, but from a place of, you know, I kind of went through hell and went through quick and this is my pearl. Focusing on the pearl and not the hell. And Everything, every place, every business, all has its own mental atmosphere. Have you walked into a restaurant lately and you're just like, yeah, I'm not eating here, right? Not because it smelled bad or anything, you just walked in and it was like, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Or you meet someone and instantly you really don't want to remember their name, right? <laughs> right, we've all done that. I, I don't really need to remember you because I really, I don't want to associate with you for no reason whatsoever. They're perfectly nice people, right? But there's just like, there's like this chemistry that's not happening. And, and 
we need to listen to that. We need to be aware of that. We need to honor that. And a lot of times, we're so busy being nice that we don't pay any attention to it. Now, I'm not saying we should walk away or say something mean or anything. I'm just saying, OK, I'm not going to be here again, right? I'm just not, because it's not in my alignment. Ernest Holmes says about the law of attraction, we each automatically attract to ourselves just what we are. And we may set it, and we may set it down that whenever we are, however intolerable the situation may be, we are just where we belong. And that sounds harsh, right? We're right where we belong. But that's not because we're right where we belong, not because it's the right place for us. It's the right opportunity for us to get the pearl, I believe. So I may not want to meet this person again. I don't want to remember their name. But I can have a conversation, and I can walk away from that taking a little pearl, even if that's a selfish pearl, right? A self-love pearl. It's all about shifting to a place of love and then allowing the experiences and the people and the places around you to lift it even higher to the place where you can start lifting it higher for others. You know, it's that give and take. That's what makes change into small stuff, is the give and take. That's why we love this community, because when we're going through hell, and we all do, right? We've got others who are willing to share their pearls. We have practitioners that are willing to know our truth and to stand in it with us. We have everything we need to turn it into a mohill on the other side quickly. I'm not saying we don't have to go through it. We all have to go through it. But we don't have to build a condo, right, as they say. We get to go through it quicker because of the love and support we have, because of the loving individuals that we are, because we spend time acknowledging our spiritualness and stepping into that power, that power of being in the presence. Holmes goes on to write, there is no power in the universe but ourselves that can free us. Thus, we should definitely daily, using our own name, declare the truth about ourselves, realizing that we are reflecting our statements into consciousness to be operated through. Our declaration of truth, I am. Right here and right now, I am love in action. My declaration of truth. Have you thought about your declaration of truth for your life? It's a wonderful thing. And it can change every day if you want it to. But when you declare it, when you do the I am that, it is that that follows I am that begins to create in your life in all forms in wonderful forms. So that takes us to that idea of we're either attracting or repelling something, right? I'm either accepting it, be it what we in our human form call good or bad, or I'm rejecting it, good or bad. And it all depends on what kind of energy we put into it, right? When, when we are Thing keeps going down. So anyway, <laughs> when we are um, allowing our mental, thank you. When we are when we're allowing our mental atmosphere, our mentally, our mental state, to be that in the higher levels of vibration. When we allow that to be the predominant place where we hang out 
then we get to attract those things that are in that space. And we get to consciously reject those things that we don't want. And we also get to unconsciously do the same thing, right? Because unconsciously, some things that are negative kind of feel comfortable. Let's face it, there's some comfort in that because it's familiar. And there's some fear about the unfamiliar, that idea of, yeah, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be successful at this. But there's fear that always shows up. And it starts to take, I call it space in our head, right? All of those fear voices, all of that, all of that, which is only just our ego, because you know our ego wants to be comfortable too. But all of those voices start taking up extra space in our head. And that those voices tend to change how we're thinking and how we're feeling. And we start doubting ourselves. Right? Anybody been there? Like, whoa, wait a second. Trust me, putting on this retreat, there were a couple of times I like, oh, now wait a second here now. But it's true. It happens all the time to us. And it's about, for me, it's about telling those voices, thank you, but no thank you. Thank you, but not now. Thank you, I'll remember it later. Write anything I need to do to Shut them up. Let's just face it, right? Ernest Holmes again. We have the ability, the ability to choose what we will do with our lives and are unified with a law which automatically produces our choices. While we do not have the ability to destroy the idea of ourselves, we do have the ability to deface it and to make it appear. To make it appear not as it should be. We can destroy our own divine image if that is our choice. Goes on to say, we live in a universe of love as well as law, and they complement each other. The universe of love is the pulsating feeling emotion, and the universe of law is the executioner of feelings and all emotions. In other words, the law just executes on our thoughts and our emotions and our predominant prevailing thoughts and emotions. Troward goes on to this in a much more detailed form because, you know, Troward is a lawyer by trade. And he says, first, the first whole train of causation, change, is started by some emotion which gives rise to a desire. Then, our internal judgment approves of the desire and initiates the will to direct the imagination to create a spiritual prototype, a mental atmosphere, and keeps the imagination centered on the mental equivalent, which then creates the spiritual nucleus that forces the law of attraction to create. Isn't that amazing? It's just how it works. What we really, really want is what we really, really focus on, and we add some emotion to that, and some imagination, and we sit in gratitude. And all of this time, that little, that little spiritual nucleus is directing the law. So simple, yet so difficult. Because whatever it is I'm attracting or I'm repelling, right, is going to create change. That's it. Nothing ever stays the same. Nothing ever stays comfortable. It just can't. And it can't because we're in that divine partnership and we have that divine spark. We can't extinguish it. We can put a barrel over it, I suppose, but we can't stop it, nor should we want to stop it. Um, C.S. Lewis, 
once pointed out. It may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird, but it's a jolly sight harder for it to fly while remaining in the egg. <laughs> we can't go on forever being just good eggs. We must hatch or go bad. Life is a process of growth. So change. This is where faith comes in. Because when we trust God, we trust the universe, we then are trusting ourselves. And when we're trusting ourselves, it can't become a mountain. It can't. When we really, really recognize that spirit trusts us enough to have this pile in front of us, we should be thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit, to know that I can handle this much, right? And thank you for guiding me and helping me handle this much. Because I know this is how much we can trust ourselves. We can trust ourselves to know that on the other end, oh, there is so much love, so much to celebrate, and more importantly, so many pearls to share with other people. We may not be able to control change. We may not be able to fight it, but we can accept it as a miracle in process. And that's all it really is. It is a way for us to go to the next level and to be grounded in that which is changeless, which is God. Changeless. Always love, always joy, always, always right here, right now when we need it. It's the truth. So, I have two questions for you to ponder today. Am I willing to embrace change in order to accept a greater degree of livingness? And am I willing to go through change centered in faith and trust and knowing that it is good unfolding as a miracle right here and right now. And if we're willing to do that, right? If we're willing to do that, we can take on anything, knowing that we are fully supported. We are fully supported by spirit. We're fully supported by this center. We are fully supported by our own power. So let's step into the power and have a good time. Thank you. Namaste.